the Green Hornet. He hunts the biggest of all game, public enemies that even the G-men cannot reach. The Green Hornet. much I still wanted to say to him. Call him back. Call him back, Roger. Tonight I'm exhausted. Perhaps another time. He gave you one message, though. Abbott. Abbott. I'll see him. A man named Abbott. Mr. Abbott's office. An appointment? Have you met him before? Very well, please come. Time for his daily reading. Under that swank headquarters. Of course. I made sure, Abbott. I'm putting a girl in to do nothing but check on the death notices and adding another woman to the sales force. Sales force? Of course. I've learned considerable of the idea of coming to me for an interview and a sitting, doesn't she? Well, I'll be... <laughs> Roger, you're all right. Furthermore, Abbott, we're not going to be quite cash for wildcat stocks. What do you mean by that? Precisely what I said. Office of yours, more along the lines of a dignified brokerage house. An actual less risk with the law business. Now, look, as long as you run it along the line, both of us land in prison. You Now, how much have you taken in since yesterday? Mr. Uh, $5,000. Sold us some continent. Worthless. Sure. What time? A brand. Anything else? The most important angle of... Seem to forget a matter of five named Joyce. They left 10000 with 4000 Who told you I'll that... I'll take the money in cash, Abbott, and don't take such risks. I might decide to find another broker to work with me. You try that and I'll get as deep as I am. That's a matter of proof, my friend. Here's a funny one for you. This is Nolulu. Get a load of this negative. And be careful, it's still wet from the rinsing bath. I shot a picture of this Roger at the Hotel Continental Affair this afternoon. Yeah? Well, what about it, Clicker? Well, the doggone negatives are positive, see? That palooka has such a dark complexion that he shows white on the negative. Now, ain't that something? Well, who is the bird, anyway, Clicker? Oh, Roger something or other. Took a couple of shots of him. What's he do, look at... Oh, he does all the tricks. Crystal reading, spirit tapping, table tilting. I was talking to a couple of dames over at that meeting... And they claim he brought back the spirit of their dead husband. Ridiculous. Well, I'm just telling you what they told one of those spirits. Good afternoon, Miss Case. Oh, hello, Miss Benny. Oh, hello, Mr. Reed. I didn't know whether you'd be in or not today, Mr. Reed. Oh, you do. I was just showing Miss Case this negative, Mr. Reed. It's that new sensation in the spiritualistic world. Who's that? The Roger. Oh, well, a couple of the girls were talking about... By the sensation. He's got everybody... He's a good press agent. He's up in town. Send enough stuff in the office here to fill half a dozen of Gunnigan's wastebasket. You know what? Racketeers. And press agent Roger didn't get by him. See print. Well, you suppose this Roger really has something on the ball? He's got just enough... On... But you know, Mr. Reed, there are no ghosts. I'm surprised that the law doesn't step on a man like that. I don't know why the law should. Well, in the first place, he's obtaining money under false pretenses. Yes, but Mr. Reed, he really does give people some comfort. Don't you think so? I think too, that, Mr. Reed. If it gives a woman comfort to think she's hearing from her departed husband... Beyond that. What do you mean by that? I've heard of men like as a means of robbery. Hmm. However, we have a newspaper to run. Uh, look, why not let me sign up for one of his weekly meetings and take along a hidden camera and some flashbulbs? Picture of him. Picture of a ghost. Yes, Benny. Huh? 
for such an unethical proceeding. Well, that's what I was afraid of. I'll be in my office, Miss Case, if anyone calls. Very well. And, uh, by the way, if someone should happen to already have a good picture of a ghost uh, taken at a seance, uh, yes, we, uh, we might use it for a Sunday magazine picture. Look here, Casey. Don't you worry about someone just happening to have that sort of a picture. I'll be around with one inside the next couple of days. Hiya, Clicker. Hey, Click, how's the girl photographer these days? Hi, gang. What's up? Come on over here with station, and you're the guy to give it to me. Right here, I'll do. Sit down on the edge of the desk or someplace. i got to make a call. Uh, look through that drawer, will you? Uh-oh, candid camera shooting, huh? And how? Here's the number. Hey, does it ever occur to you that you could clean out this drawer sometimes and make things easier for yourself? Careful you don't break any of those filters. Hey, Scott, how do you know what's in here? Well, there's the Leica down at the bottom. Uh, pull out that photo flash attachment, too. Where are you going? We're going to a spiritualistic seance, Lowry, and get a picture of a ghost. Now, hey, have you gone screwy? Maybe so. Uh, is this what you want? Oh, that's it. Close the drawer now. I'm going to try to warn you in a minute. Don't you? Wherever there's trouble, there's a picture, Lowry. And I'd go a long way for a good picture. How much money you got? Money? What's that? No fooling. Follow a couple of bucks, will you? I've got to get a couple of flash bulbs and... Say, Lowry, have you got a speeding? Oh, here. Is this the Roger studio? Well, I'd like to know if it's possible for me to... One of the... Cell... Music came from an unseen source in the velvet drape room where Roger held his seance. Atmosphere amid luxurious furniture and silk tapestries... A well-dressed group of kids sat Clicker Binney, trying to show the same wide-eyed expression as all the other ladies showed. With her was Ed Lowry. Ooh, Clicker. This place smells bad. Shut up, Mug. That's incense. Yeah, well, I wish we were out of here. Scared? Oh, my eye. Now, get things straight. You keep that reflector with a flash of the ghost, and when I click the shutter, the bulb will go off. And we'll go out on our ears. That's okay by me, as long as we get the picture. With his head swathed to the floor, his deep-set, heavy-lidded eyes... Surveyed the piece, then he took his place at the head of a table and motioned wordlessly for the others to gather close to him. As they did so, the lights became dimmer, and then the room... In an adjoining room, a man and woman stood with many yards of cheesecloth draped about them. To commune with the spirits that lie beyond the grave, I must ask that all of you remain absolutely silent and concentrate on the hope of seeing one who was dearly beloved by you in life. Will you concentrate in a state of mind, the line beyond which no person once crossing has ever been. It may be possible that the voice of someone who means much to one of self heard come and let itself be seen. If it is recognized... This time, Greg. That's so loud. Where's the megaphone? I've got to get the old sepulchral spirit mark in there. Get the megaphone up to the Rogers. Press the signal button. It is near the borderline. Calling to me. Oh. I must caution you not to even recognize him. Oh, I hear a voice. I hear a voice. Who calls me? I feel a presence in this room. Someone from the hereafter is calling for attention. Come, give me your name. My name was John. John. John, will you let us see you? Someone is calling for me. I will let myself be seen. Come, John. A friend of yours is here. I would like to have a word with him. <laughs> Someone took a picture. What in place? Who did that, John? John, where are you? This way. Turn on the lights. What is the meaning of this disturbance? This is profane. This is unheard of. This is the way out. We got it. We got it. <laughs> The curtain falls on the first act of our Green Hornet adventure. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. When Britt Reed heard through society friends that Roger, the spiritualist, was using his supposed occult powers to persuade widows to trust their money to his accomplice, he had Clicker Binney get a photograph of the specter at one of the seances. The next day, when Britt Reed came to his office, Ed Lowry was there before him. The girl got a beautiful shot, boss. It shows that fake up to her fairly well. Good enough, Lowry. We can use that photo in a Sunday supplement in a few weeks. I'm planning on a feature story dealing with these racketeers and ghosts. Well, I can contribute. How's that? Well, I can contribute. There have been a lot of cases where women have been told by the crook they thought to be the spirit of their dear departed to go and sink their cash into phony stocks and bonds. Where did you get that? Police headquarters. They've had complaints on Raja. They have? Yeah. Huh, that's odd. And the other evening, a couple of women were telling me about him. They'd been sent to a man named Abbott. That's the guy. He sold them stocks that weren't worth a hoot. That's what the cops were told. But the law can't prove a thing. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, perhaps an expose in the Sentinel would do some good. That's what I had in mind, Laurie. Roger will sue if you mention him. Well, let him sue. Then it won't get anywhere, boss. That's the tough part of it. He'll fold up and move to another city if things get too tough here. There's no way to get the goods on him, and less chance of linking Abbott up with him. Yeah, it's a confounded shame that this sort of thing can go on unchecked. You're telling me? I say the way Raj and Abbott worked the racket, it's almost foolproof. Where's the picture Miss Vinnie took? Here. Here, take a look at it. Say, that is something. Isn't that a Lulu? Well, it's a darn shame the cops can't take that as evidence. It wouldn't mean a thing. I know. Roger didn't charge anything for the seance, so the law can't touch him. Hang it all, it's the old story. The law can't touch him. The law couldn't get at Roger and his racket. But Britt had deeper plans when he arranged for the picture to be made. We find him in his apartment with Cato, his faithful servant and the only living man to know him as the Green Hornet. This picture, Cato, shows me how the ghost appears and where he comes from. Yes, Mr. Britt. In my careful study, I can get a fairly good idea of this man's face in spite of the gauze that's draped over his head. Yes, sir. And I think that with that, I can step out at the next seance. What are you going to do? Give the Roger the shock of his life. How? The Green Hornet's going to a seance. The next ghost that Roger summons from behind those drapes is going to have altogether too much to say. Now we've got to make some plans, some rather elaborate plans. Yes? And you'll be in on them. He uses a phonograph, Cato, that's probably played from the same back room that the ghosts wait their turn in. What about that? Now, let me see. Abbott, that's the name of the bird that handles the financial end. Yes, sir. I'm going to give him an invitation to the next seance. I wonder what he'll have to say. <laughs> He won't dare say much in front of the guests. Neither will the Roger. But after the guests have gone, I wonder. Several evenings later, an exceptionally fashionable group of people were in attendance at the seance. Before the Raja made his appearance, he met his accomplice, Abbott, in the side room. Have you seen all the new people that are here tonight? I wouldn't know the new from the old. We're getting the society trade now, Abbott. People with lots of money. Not so loud. They can't hear me in the next room. What are you going to do here anyway? Sit in. Sort of unusual, isn't it? Any objections? No. No objections, of course. Glad to have you here. I just thought I'd see if you weren't trying a little double cross on your own hook. Whatever gave you that idea, Abbott? You've been mighty quick to suspect me. I had sufficient reason to. Okay, Raja. Just don't try anything, that's all. You better go and sit down. I'm going to start in a couple of minutes. Right. <laughs> this should be worth watching. You fake. Greer. Ready for the music? Yes, you may start the recording now. Give them a good show tonight, Greer. Now, Jane. Yes? You ought to be the daughter of James Stilwell. He is in the group. Drowned last summer, didn't I? That's right. I have the part memorized. Good. I'll go and start things. I'm going to ask that guy for a reason pay one of these days. Oh, I'm worried about that picture someone took the other night. I haven't heard anything from him. What's there to worry about? I don't know, Greer, but just the same. Keep still. They can't hear it. <gasps> Who? That mask. Go on. Your voice is down. You'll regret it. <laughs> What's the matter with... Steady, you <laughs> truck. You're going to take a little nap. <laughs> uh, you went out nicely, young lady. You... <clears throat> That's it. Stay right down here. All right, Cato. You can come in now. They made no noise. Yeah, that was the big gamble. But I guess they've grown so accustomed to keeping quiet back here that they did it subconsciously. How is that? You want it? Very well. Hurry and get it set on that machine. Yes, sir. Where can I? Ah, let me see. Oh, there's a good place to hide. There is. Have the car ready right outside the window? Yes, sir. What time is it now? Ten o'clock. We've got to handle things just right. Stop the machine. If it is recognized by any one of you, please speak softly and address it by name. Concentrate, my friends. Concentrate. Now for it. 
We must all concentrate. There seems to be a disturbing influence among us. Is there someone called Lucian? That's me. Concentrate, my dear. Concentrate. Do you speak from the hereafter? I speak to someone called Lucia. Vincent. Vincent, is that you? You wish to ask me something? Something is wrong. Yes. Yes, tell me, dear. Are you happy? Yes, Lucian. I am happy. Before you left, I never knew. Was there any pain? Did you suffer, dear? There was no pain. We miss you so much. Lucia. There is one thing you must do. Yes. Yes, tell me. It can save money. Yes. Yes. You must invest your insurance. Take it from the bank and invest it. But I don't... Hey, Lucia. A good investment house. The Gurney Sanders. What? Concentrate, please. Do not disturb the spell. I remember the name. Vincent, tell me. Tell me a little more. Vincent, I can't see you now. Tell me a little more. Vincent! Concentrate. Concentrate, my friends. Do not break this spell. Someone whose name is Elizabeth. That's my name. Elizabeth, your brother sends you word through me. Yes. Yes, my brother. Where is he? He couldn't come. He sends you word. Do not trust any but the firm of Gurney Sanders with your investment. Do you understand? Yes, I understand. My brother was always afraid I'd... I can do no more. I can do no more tonight. There is a disturbing influence here. The seance has ended. I am not well. Please, the lights. Another time. But please, now, go. I want to talk to Vincent again. Another time. Another time, please. My brother. Can I get more word from my brother? Another time, I tell you. Go, get out, leave me. I am not well. The Roger turned up the lights, and the amazed people were hurriedly sent from the luxurious room. All but Abbott, who remained behind until the others had gone. And then... You dirty, double-crossing crook. It's a good thing I came here tonight. Abbott, believe me, there was something wrong. I don't know what happened to Greer. I can tell you what happened to Greer. You decided to play along with that Gurney Sanders firm, huh? I got the tip off on that, Roger. That's why I came here tonight. You're crazy, I tell you. Oh, no, I'm not. You're the one that's crazy to think you could put something like that over on me. Maybe you thought my office wasn't swank enough for the society swells you had here, huh? No, no. You had Greer all primed to give that stuff out. Then when you saw me, you didn't get a chance to change the instructions. It isn't true. Oh, yes, it is. I'm not a blind fool, you know, Roger. Well, don't get the idea you can double-cross me. All right, you blustering idiot. Just what do you propose to do? I'm going to smash you. Oh, no, you're not. Maybe you're the one that took that picture the other night. I don't know what you're talking about. Maybe you thought a photograph of one of the ghosts would smash me. Well, let me tell you this. I know the law, and I've stayed inside the law. And that's more than you have done. Oh, is it? Yes, it is. You open your mouth and I'll send you to jail. You can't do it. Oh, yes, I can. There have been plenty of people who have gone to your place and bought worthless stock. There have been a lot of others that have bought stock from you and been told the stock went down. But what they bought on margin was wiped out. I happen to know, Abbott, that you never bought the stock at all. You just pocketed the dough. Well, don't get any foolish ideas about trying to make trouble for me. You can't double-cross me and get away with it. Who's that? How do I know? Where is Greer? You can ask him. I didn't try to double-cross you, Abbott. Greer, where are you? Answer the door. I'll go myself. We'll continue this discussion a little later, Riser. I'm not through by any means. Where's he at? Stand aside. Let's go through the place. Police, what's the meaning of this? What do you want here? Where's the Green Hornet? The Green Hornet? I know nothing about the Green Hornet. He's hiding out here someplace. I just got the phone call a little while ago and we come right over. It's too bad he didn't do something about you two rats before he skipped out. He's probably gone by this time. Whoever called you is mistaken. There was no phone call from here and the Green Hornet has not been here. And we don't want you cops around. Now clear out. What are you doing here, Abbott? Uh... I am reading his palm. You think fast on your feet, don't you, Roger? Let's have a look behind there. One moment, officer. Maybe you've heard that a warrant is required before you can search a man's home. You know all the laws, don't you? Sufficient of them. That's why I came here tonight, Joe. Someone in there. Come on. That's my voice. Let's go see. You think you could put something like that over on me? Maybe you thought my office wasn't swank enough. You two talk. It's well, a frame-up. Shut up. No, no. That's Greer all primed to give that stuff out. Then when you saw me, you didn't get a chance to change the instructions. It isn't true. Oh, you... Let me out of here. Turn that thing off. Quiet, Roger. 
Looks like we got the goods on you at last. Let me go. Let me get out of here. No, you don't. Not so fast. That record will hold in court. Hang on to these two. We're taking you both in and that record as well. No, no. It's a frame-up, I tell you. You can't do it. Let me go. This intrusion. You have no warrant. We're taking you guys in without a warrant. Take that record along. Who did it? Who did it? Hey, look over there. Those two on the floor. Holy mackerel. What's happened to them? It's Greer. Your helpers. I knew there was something wrong. I told you, Abbott. I told you that Greer wasn't the one who appeared. They're alive, all right. Just knocked out. Yeah. We'd better call the boys and have the wagon sent over. This thing's bigger than we thought. Yeah, take that record so we don't lose that. I've got it. And hey, holy cats, look at this. I get it now. We were sent over here to get the Green Hornet. Okay. Look what's on the record. The mark of the Green Hornet. There he goes. He's outside. He sneaked out this window. Boys, I'd say offhand the Hornet framed this whole thing. I told you we were framed. It won't hold in court. Oh, yes. This will hold in court, Raja. And for once in his life, the Green Hornet's done a good turn for the police department. is a copyrighted feature of the Green Hornet Incorporated.